Hi, I'm Chris Monk, owner of Highline Guitars. For those of you who subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow my uh, group on Facebook called the Electric Guitar Builders Resource, you know that I like to post videos every now and then where I demonstrate new tools uh, and techniques which I think will benefit guitar builders, um, uh, whether they're hobbyists or small business luthiers like myself. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a tool which I believe could be a major game changer. It's called the X-Carve. It is a 3D carving machine which is available from a company called Inventables located in Chicago. For those of you who may not be familiar with what a 3D carving machine is, it's based on a technology called CNC. And CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. And what this technology allows you to do is it allows you to control the operation and movement of a carving spindle with a computer. So what you would do is you would design your project on a computer. The computer then would convert that uh, design into code which is sent to a processor attached to the, um, the 3D carver. And then uh, after loading the material that you're going to be carving into, and it can be wood, it can be plastic, it can be uh, different types of metals, it's a wide range of different materials you can work with, the uh, machine will then carve out that shape for you. Um, it's sort of like sending a document to a printer, only in this case, you're not uh, printing on paper, you're carving out of uh, the material that you've selected. Uh, the advantages of this technology are speed, accuracy, and repeatability. Even though uh, I can carve a guitar body or a guitar neck pretty quickly, the CNC machine, um, under many circumstances, can actually do it faster than I'm capable of doing it. Um, in terms of accuracy, I can carve and, and cut things by hand. Um, I can achieve an accuracy of thousandths of an inch. However, I can't maintain that over a long period of time. A uh, 3D carving machine is able to maintain that from start to finish without ever wavering. Um, and then in terms of re uh, repeatability, if you're gonna make, let's say, uh, 500 widgets for an upcoming show where you want to sell your widgets. Um, the very last one that you carve, the 500th one, will be identical to the first one. That is assuming you keep the machine well maintained. Another feature of 3D carving that uh, doesn't get a lot of discussion, but I think it's worth mentioning, I think it's very important, and that is accessibility. And you're probably wondering, how does accessibility figure into this? Well, when you make a guitar, uh, you do a lot of cutting, carving, and sanding by hand, and it's, it's very physically intensive labor. And um, I, I think that for a lot of folks, uh, there can come a time in their lives where they just can't do that kind of work anymore, and it becomes too difficult. Um, as a result, they have to give up their passion. And, 3D carving machine like this X-Carve can uh, keep that opportunity and those doors open. So rather than giving up your hobby or uh, finding another line of work, a machine like this can make it possible to do it and to keep uh, moving forward. And also uh, what a machine like this does is it opens doors. Um, I know that uh, when I first started exploring this 3D carving machine, I immediately was caught by the idea that this could allow me to do some things that, while I can do them by hand, because of the time it takes to do them, this machine will allow me to do it and do it much faster and more efficiently. So what makes the Inventables X-Carve so special? Well, the folks at Inventables engineered this machine to be both user-friendly as well as open source. Uh, open source is a term that's normally associated with software, and it means that you can modify the software to suit whatever your needs are. Well, in the case of the X-Carve uh, hardware, open source means that you can modify the design of this machine to suit whatever your needs may be. I ordered the X-Carve directly from the Inventables website. The X-Carve can be ordered in two sizes, a 500mm and a larger 1000mm. 
The 500 millimeter has a work area of 12 by 12 inches, and the 1000 millimeter has a work area of 31 by 31 inches. I selected the 1000 millimeter and ordered it fully loaded, which means I got all the top of the line options. Of course, with Inventables, you don't have to order the X car fully loaded. You can order either size machine and configure it to meet your needs and budget by selecting options from their a la carte menu. A couple of weeks after placing my order, the X carve arrived in three neatly packed boxes. I went ahead and got the optional tool kit just to be sure I had everything necessary to assemble the X carve. Of course, you're going to need a sturdy table to support the X carve. I was fortunate to already have one in my shop, so I'm just going to repurpose it to be a support for the X carve. I may have to make some modifications to it, but that shouldn't be too difficult. As you can see, all of the parts for the X-Carve are bagged and well marked, so you shouldn't have any trouble identifying what you need for each step of the assembly process. While I was laying out all the components for the X-Carve in preparation to assemble it, I noticed one thing was missing. There are no printed instructions. Instead, the instructions are available on the Inventables website. So all you have to do is, is visit inventables.com, click on the link for instructions, and you'll be taken to a page where each step of the assembly process is listed in the order that they need to be done. When you click on the link for each step, you're taken to a page where that step is explained in great detail using photo, text, and video. Now I found the instructions are pretty easy to follow. However, you need to pay very, very close attention to how every component is assembled because it's easy to actually assemble a component in the wrong orientation. I'm not going to be shooting video of the entire process of assembling an X-Carve because I'd be duplicating the efforts that Inventables has already done. If you visit their website and click on the instruction page, you'll find a well-organized list of videos that cover virtually every step of the assembly process. One thing I noticed as I was uh, making my way through the assembly is that sometimes the name of the part uh, doesn't necessarily match the name in the parts list in the instructions. However, the part numbers always do. So if there's any doubt, check that part number. Make sure that it corresponds. So far, the assembly of my X-Carve has gone very smoothly. I just have finished putting together the X-Carriage here. And I have to say, all the parts fit together perfectly. I've had no uh, issues with misalignment, uh, no issues with missing or damaged parts. Everything has gone together exactly as the instructions indicated they would. Assembly of the X-Carve took about eight hours, and I have to say, uh, it went pretty smooth. I didn't encounter any missing parts, nothing was damaged, and the instructions seemed to be uh, pretty clear and easy to follow, but I will say, you've got to pay close attention to the instructions. Don't just glance them or give them a cursory look. You've got to really focus on um, how all the parts uh, are assembled and oriented together because it's easy to get things um, assembled in the wrong orientation. And while that's not a, a big disaster, it doesn't mean you would have to go back and redo everything. So, And that just is, is going to take you more time. Uh, I did encounter a couple of very minor issues, and, and I'll explain what those were. One is, on the Z-axis, there's this uh, lead screw, and this one happens to be the Acme lead screw, and it runs through a Daryl and nut. Well, the tolerances between the, the Daryl and nut and the lead screw are so tight, it actually would bind um, the stepper motor. So what I did was, is I took the lead screw and the Daryl and nut off, and I put the lead screw into an electric hand drill and then just ran the Daryl and nut back and forth along the screw, which helped to kind of loosen up that tolerance a little bit. And then once I put it back together, uh, everything moves nice and smooth. Another problem was on this V wheel on this side of the Z axis, you can't get to the end of the um, um, hex screw head, so uh, you have to, to take a, a hex wrench like this and just 
cut off the end so that you can get it in there um, and, and have the ability to tighten it. Uh, and then the final issue that I encountered was with the eccentric nuts. Uh, these are a clever idea and a great way to adjust the tension and the tightness of the V-wheel. The problem is, is that they can loosen as the machine is operating. Uh, one of the solutions that uh, I've, other people have told me about is just to use some Loctite, and that seems to work well. I do think it would be kind of cool down the road if maybe Inventables uh, could come up with a, an eccentric nut that has, it's like an, with these nylon locking nuts. It would be a, essentially a nylon locking eccentric nut. So, but I, can, I realize that that would be kind of costly to develop something like that. But really, those are the only issues that I encountered, and that's pretty minor. After assembling the x card the next step was to uh, connect it to my computer, and I did that using the supplied USB cable. This cable is connected to the Arduino-based controller, which in turn is attached to the power supply. In order for the computer to communicate with the controller, you need to have the right software. With the X-Carve, you have a variety of options. There are a number of third-party uh, 3D design programs, uh, toolpath uh, software programs, and G-Code Center programs and those combined are uh, how you would control the operation of the stepper motors in the spindle. The problem is, and I think this is what turns off a lot of people from pulling the trigger on using a 3D carving machine, is that the software can cost as much as the machine costs. And if that's not bad enough, the learning curve can be extremely steep. To bring 3D carving to the masses, Inventables has come up with its own software package. The program is called Easel, and it was designed specifically to work with the X-Carve and can satisfy the needs of beginners and experts alike. The nice thing about Easel is it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Instead, what you need to do is go on Inventables.com and set up a, an account with a username and password. Then you have access to Easel. In fact, you don't even have to own an x card to do that. And I would highly recommend you go onto the website, create the account, and just kind of start playing in there to see what its capabilities are. A lot of the programs that we have to use for CNC are oftentimes way more complicated than what most people are going to need to use them for. And so for that reason, it's kind of hard to want to spend the money for something that you're not going to be using uh, to its fullest. So with uh, Easel, you can do some basic design and then assign tool paths and then export it uh, to the controller as G-code. And a lot of that is done behind the scenes without you having to, to really get involved. Now you will notice that Easel is a little bit limited in what it's capable of in terms of design, but there's a trick that you can use. If you have a vector-based drawing program that can save or export as a .svg, you could open that design in Easel and then assign the toolpaths to it and send it off to the machine to be carved. If you're using a Macintosh computer, it doesn't matter. Easel doesn't care whether you're on a Windows or a Mac. What it does care about is that you have the latest operating system. So you want to make sure that that's all up to date. Then you shouldn't have any trouble communicating with the uh, controller. Some of you may want to use much more sophisticated features than what Easel currently offers. However, before you invest uh, money into a, an expensive uh, design program or tool pathing software solution, I would recommend that you talk to the folks at Inventables first and ask them if they plan to incorporate some of those features into a future release of Easel, because I'd hate to see you spend a lot of money for something that's going to be available for free. I used Easel to do my first test carve. First I set up my logo in Adobe Illustrator and saved it as a .svg file. Then I imported it into Easel, selected the material, set my tool paths, and let the program figure out the depth of cut, feed rate, and spindle speed. It was almost as easy as printing a document on a desktop printer.
I gotta say, uh, the Highline Guitars logo initial test carve turned out pretty good. This is the very first thing I've ever cut on a CNC machine, and it looks perfect. I don't see any flaws anywhere in it, so um, I'm pretty happy. After I finished my initial test carve of my Highline Guitars logo, uh, I did a couple of other quick test carves. This is a, a guitar fretboard. And what I've done is I um, carved out the shape of a stylized um, barracuda fish, the skeleton, and then I kind of inlaid it with a little bit of uh, blue-gray enamel. Uh, then I did these. This is a pickup ring, and if you look at the front of an electric guitar, uh, some of them you'll notice have um, these rings that are usually made out of plastic, uh, sometimes metal, but. Um, I made these out of maple, and normally when I make these by hand, it takes a couple of hours. Uh, but with the X-Carve, the work was done in about 15 minutes, and I got two of them, so that was pretty cool. Um, but at the end, I think the, the big questions that people will have is, will this machine do what I need it to do, and is it worth the money? And I think the answer to both questions is yes. Um, Initially, when I was first looking at the specifications for the machine, I was wondering whether or not the Z-axis would have enough travel to allow me to carve through an electric guitar body. And uh, I think that uh, based on the type of guitars that I design, it shouldn't be a problem. If I needed to increase the travel, I think that um, I could probably make some simple modifications that would allow that. And that's the beauty of uh, working with this particular machine and working with a company like Inventables. If I want to modify anything, if I wanted to change the stepper motors or go with a more powerful spindle, that's not that big a deal. And if there's anything I need to do that I'm not really sure of, Inventables has its own forum page where you can post questions to other X-Card users and uh, usually get your answers pretty quick. And, and some of these guys have done some uh, pretty impressive modifications to their machines. So uh, it's nice to know that when uh, dealing with uh, a product like this, that there's a whole community that backs it up. So uh, that, that gave me some confidence in selecting this machine. Um, and then in terms of the value, you know, is it worth the money? Honestly, all the quality of the components are as good as they're going to get. I really don't think, maybe with the exception of replacing some of the uh, V-wheels, which are uh, plastic with metal ones, that, that might uh, improve, you know, incrementally, but I, I, I really don't know that that's ever going to be an issue. Uh, I do know that you can get these V-wheels in metal, so, you know, if, if that ever becomes a, a necessity, I might look into it. But for now, I don't see that that would be an issue. Everything else is rock solid, high quality, sturdy, durable. And the other day I was thinking, you know, if I had to, uh, you know, uh, you know $1,500 to spend and I could only buy either a machine uh, like this or a, a, a high-end bandsaw, I would definitely buy this machine first. The, the capabilities are so much greater. And this machine is really opening doors for me. In fact, when I haven't been using it, I've been thinking about what I'll, I'll use it for. And I've got all kinds of ideas of things that I'd like to do. And that's just going to broaden um, what I'm capable of in building my electric guitars. So if you're looking for an affordable yet highly useful CNC solution, you should definitely look into the X-Car from Inventables.